Hey guys and welcome to this video where we look through what is inside my Jurassic box or the sharp tooth box as it's known. Um, I got a request not too long ago, I forget who sent the request so apologies, uh, you'll have to comment below if it was you, um, a request to do an updated Jurassic Park collection video. Um, I guess they saw my two previous Jurassic Park collection videos that are up on my old YouTube channel, uh, the links are in the description for those uh, below and um, and I figured yeah why not I'll, I'll go through what I have left um, is a good way of putting it because um, I did sell a lot of my collection so what we have here is predominantly what is left uh, of what I own Jurassic wise um, I do own stuff like uh, some posters which are out at the Pterodome set um, and I've got a couple of other like tiny little knick-knacky bits that are lying around the place but I can't really think what they where they are or what they are because <laughs> I haven't looked in this box for a while so um, so we'll go through this and then uh, and maybe if I miss anything I can mention it um, I do have the Jurassic World Mark Englert poster that's hanging up in another room um, but that's that's not here because it's hanging up so but yeah so let's let's begin and let's begin down here with where it all began with the original book by Michael Crayon which uh is the classic version. I don't know when this one was released actually. Let me have a look. Was this the uh this is the third reprint from nineteen ninety three. So this is the one that came out the same year as Jurassic Park, uh, the film. And it's got these uh bits of torn papers, like bookmarks in it, because I think they're they were in there when we were doing research for the Dinosaur Protection Group website and the um Extinction Now website. Um, I've just opened up on a page just to see if I can find a, uh, find out what I was looking at on this page to try and get an idea of why I... Um, mm, no, I don't know. Something about uh, Robert Muldoon, his history, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's it. Something to do with that. I don't know. But anyway, they're, yeah, they're marked. They've been left in there since we worked on the Fallen Kingdom. Um, for research purposes, but yeah, so I've got obviously the original book still um, here we've got The Lost World, and I love this cover, this is one of my favourite um, covers, well probably my favourite cover to come out of any Jurassic Park novel um, I just think it looks so mysterious and I love the, the silver uh, logo on the front there and this has got a bookmark in it because my wife is currently reading it for the first time um, and I haven't read this in a while, so uh, she's going to give me her thoughts on the story once it's all done. Maybe we'll record it so she can uh, let you guys know what her thoughts are on that book. Um, over here, before I get into the box, over here we've got... Uh, let me just bring this over here. Uh, we've got The Evolution of Claire, which is a, uh, a really neat little addition to the Jurassic canon. Um, it's a book... I, like. I'll be honest, I'll be honest, I read the uh, an early draft of this uh, that wasn't finished, um, they said, Universal sent it to myself and Tim to go over, um, you know, if it was uh, holding up to canon standards, should we say, and, um, and uh, yeah, we gave our thoughts back, and then she finished the book, and so hopefully our notes were good enough, and I know, I won't say what specifically, but I know there's some major changes in this book that... Um, were made because of the contribution and notes that we made um, and so if I'm going to be completely honest I, I actually haven't sat down to read the finished version in full yet I'm saving it I don't really know why maybe I should read that soon um, <laughs> uh, but yeah so I, I enjoyed the story for what it was and, uh, and I thought it, it built on the, uh, the history of the actual park itself really well um, and yeah, and I do love this book, like the, the look of this book is neat, like if you take the cover off, it's got this cool mosquito in amber that's embossed, and uh, I like the shiny green writing down the side there that says the evolution of Claire. So that's a, a, a really nice addition to uh, you know, the Jurassic Park uh, expanded universe, so we've got that there, um, and here we've got the survival guide which came out for the promotion of Fallen Kingdom 
And normally I wouldn't pick up a kid's book like this because this is designed for younger audiences. But the reason I picked this one up is because of this, The Secret History of Jurassic World, which, um, as some of you know, contains... Uh, so this book basically is like, you know, uh, literally like a survival guide from the characters about going to save the dinosaurs. And it like pretends that they've given you this. But this is the secret uh, history of Jurassic World. It's basically a timeline, a mission background. And it goes from 1984 all the way to, and I think, believe it's 20... Uh, where does it end? 2015. So, yeah, we get we get up to 2015. I don't think it goes beyond that, no. Um, no. But the reason I wanted to own this is because there's lots of stuff that are written in here, like this here. Um... Uh, well, lots of stuff, really. Um, uh, where are we looking? 1994, like Wu returning. These were all. This timeline was essentially taken from our the stuff we wrote for the backdoor timeline that was on the viral marketing website. So they actually, um, especially this thing here, where it talks about uh, um, the pteranodons from the end of Jurassic Park three being captured. Uh, over Canada by Vic Hoskins um, and uh, where is it the Owen Grady working on the Ibris project which um, the integrated behavioral raptor intelligence study which is what myself and Tim came up with so like our timeline made it into print media uh, it came off the websites into something that you could physically own and I was really kind of uh, happy to see that because this technically a site well technically the timeline that we wrote for the Maserani Global Backdoor viral website was the first official timeline released by Universal on the canonical events of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Um, but this was the second because they printed it out and it was just really neat to see. Even though they have got details wrong, which is really irritating, but at the same time, it's like, it's a kid's book, so what, what can you expect? Like, they, they say, like, the... Because this is meant to be written by the characters, so they think seems uh, they say things like uh, surrounding areas, sh uh, the T Rex that uh, escaped into San Diego. Uh, it says she was finally returned to Isla Sauna when the dinosaur was a he. So I've I've scribbled out the S. <laughs> so I've edited my version. So it says he was finally returned to Isla Sauna and plans for Jurassic Park San Diego were abandoned. It's like little details like that that might seem not that important uh, to people who don't really care about all this stuff but like for the Jurassic Park fans those kind of key details mean everything so um, but yeah it's, it's a neat little book um, it's not exactly canon to be honest because uh, obviously you know you can't take the survival guide as canon for the most part because obviously they have a whole page on the endoraptor and um, you know uh, Franklin uh, Franklin says to Claire here Preparing for this mission, I stumbled upon some of Dr. Wu's old park files. Okay, I hacked into them. That's where I get it. I found this. Disturbing. And um, and that doesn't really work when in the film, when they see the Endoraptor for the first time, Claire is like, what is that thing? Or something like that. It's like, you know, she hadn't seen it before. So, yeah. But it's, a, it's meant to be just a bit of fun uh, going through, like, what the characters uh, are talking about. Um in the run-up towards it does have those these hideous absolutely hideous uh malformed versions of the t like what have they done there to the t-rex's head why i don't get it because like if you look this i mean this isn't perfect because they've all they have, they have changed the shape of the t-rex there i mean it's nice that it's kind of embossed but like it's got this like weird little chicken leg and you've got this head, but if you look at that, the way its head's turned back on the way, that's the same exact render. So you go from this to this. That looks more accurate to the T-Rex than that. But then you, like, turn the page, and you've got this render, which is completely untouched, and it just looks absolutely glorious. So I have no idea. But yeah, that is... Uh, there's a few grievances with this book. It's not perfect. That render of blue looks great. Um, but at the same time... I think it's kind of important as a uh, for Jurassic fans to own something like this because it's got the timeline in it uh, that you can tangibly read. Now down here we have this. This is the Jurassic World soundtrack on vinyl. 
and this was gifted to me uh, one Christmas, I believe. Um, so you got yeah the the Jurassic World soundtrack, and it's all on the uh, vinyl discs. And if you open it up, it's got this really cool uh, original art render of the uh, Raptor Squad and Owen jumping through the air. It almost looks like something you'd see in like Lost World concept art. It's yeah, it's really really neat. And I love the look of this Raptor here. It just looks super mean. Um, but yeah, I think if I ooh, get the, I don't know ugh, the disc. It's or the uh, the record itself. Looks like that, which is uh, looks really nice. I love this like blue. It's released by Mondo. That's it. Yeah, the Mondo vinyl. And uh, yeah, it's just really nice. But now, because I'm only using one hand, I'm going to have to place that down there and put it back at the end. And here we have the laser discs. I'm not going to go through everything here because I'll be here forever. But you've got the Lost World laser disc, which is really nice. You've got some like cool raptors there. I mean, that one looks a bit weird. I don't know what's going on. It looks like they've sort of closed its mouth and it like changed its eye. Um, yeah, Lost World, and what's interesting about this laser disc is right after the credits, it has a behind-the-scenes little feature, which I believe I've got on VHS in the box as well. Um, I don't think that opens up. So you've got the Lost World laser disc there. Here we've got Jurassic Park on laser disc, the first one, and that opens up to reveal this glorious gate. And you've got yeah all the chapters and stuff. Which is really nice. And then the back, which looks like the v old VHS back. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Laserdisc is uh, is the movie. It's not it's like a record, but um if I pull this out. Oh, it's like a oh, look for these other titles directed by Steven Spielberg. Um they're basically like giant oh, CDs. So you'll see me here with the camera, hello. So yeah, it's like a giant CD, and I've got my Laserdisc player just over there. And I did a video on what the, the Jurassic Park Laserdisc is like on my old YouTube channel. Um, oh, oh god, this is going to be hard. Okay, so then I'll pop that back over there, I'll sort that out at the end. And then here we've got another version, um, which is this plastic outer casing, is a bit grubby. Um, these have been in a closet for a while. Um, so this is more like the old VHS, and it does contain booklets, which come with this one, actually, but we'll get to that in a minute. And the back of this is exactly the same as the VHS version, uh, which I do have in that box. Um, but yeah, that's really nice. And I actually watched this one recently, because we did a, a commentary for Jurassic Park on my channel, a second one, and I actually watched the Laserdisc for that. And then this one here is, I believe, this is the... I believe it's the German Laserdisc version, although this is in English. So you've got this cool cover with this like kind of... It's not actually embossed, but they, they made it look like it is. Um, it's like someone just found the uh, the embossed tool on Photoshop for the first time. <laughs> um, and you've got the footprints on the back, and on the side you've got this like nice bold Jurassic Park logo. And then you pull it out. Oops. With one hand, it's like almost virtually impossible. Oh, goodness me. And then you've got uh, the discs with the chapters. And as what's funny is like, uh, you know, this one, disc side one and side two, because you have to flip the disc, like it will go black on the screen for a second and then you have to flip the actual disc. Um, this one shuts down, so if you wanted to watch Jurassic Park and start exactly from the T-Rex breakout sequence, you just go straight to disc two. You just pop that straight in, and it starts with the lightning showing the goat, and then, you know, uh, it starts with the lightning flashing and the goat, and yeah, and then goes straight into the T-Rex breakout sequence. So, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, if you want action straight away, that's, you just put, pop that disc in. And then uh, it comes with this gorgeous yellow booklet which uh, has this amazing uh, Jurassic Park logo on the front, which is uh, the same booklet you get in uh, that version there, Jurassic Park, and it's got like uh, the raptor with the amber eye, and it's like a behind the scenes thing. And it's interesting in here, because it says like, it has like the rat information on the dinosaurs, 
And uh, one of the interesting things it says here about the raptor is uh, that um, it kills for sport. Which, where have we heard that before? <laughs> it's killing for sport. Um, yeah, and it's just a, just a really interesting, like, behind-the-scenes look at the film. In a lovely... You I mean, you could almost frame that, couldn't you? And it would look really good. Um, and then it also comes with this, like, poster that's, like, this dinosaur timeline. And it doesn't really have any uh, Jurassic Park renders on it at all. But um, if you flip it over, it's got, like, DNA, the key to life and evolution. Yeah, and it's just got facts about DNA on it. And then, yeah, and then there's the case. I think there's one other booklet in there, a secret booklet that has the same logo on the front. And then it goes into the contents of what is DNA. And you've got this, like, weird naked man running. <laughs> and you've got these, like, talks about e DNA and evolution. And you've got these, like, raptor renders that are really uh, unique looking. And, uh, and the amber. Yeah, and just another little DNA booklet, but that all comes in this laser disc. Okay, so now we're into the box. <sighs> Let's have a look. So, on the top, you can see right here we have the big red Rex, an old classic, and it's got his finger missing. But uh, yeah, and now these are on the box, but they usually live up on top of the bookshelf that we have here. Um, we have them up there, you know, just as like almost statues. But I brought them down for the for this video. Uh, you got the Frasher T Rex from the Lost World. Um, I sold the Bull T Rex and I decided to keep the Frasher T Rex because I think it looks better. It looks uh, more accurate. And some people don't know this, but like the sculpt they used, they uh, used for the Frasher T Rex is actually molded from the exact same one as the red rex so technically these are the exact same mold and you can kind of tell when you start to look at like the eye there and like the way the skin is but um but they changed the size of it and stuff um and refined refined it better um so yeah i, I love this thing i think this looks really cool and i love the fact that it's got the like greeny colors and it looks more film accurate um Accurate to what we see on the film colour-wise. Uh, yeah, so there's that. And then, uh, oh god, where to begin? Um, so here we've got some pictures that ha haven't been... Uh, well, they've been taken down because my wife and I are expecting our first uh, little one. And so the room that I had my Jurassic... O well, not my Jurassic office, but my office in that I would do work for um, Jurassic Inn um, has been moved. Um, it actually is right here now, so we've got, you know, my office thing is here. Uh, but, um, yeah, these were originally in a frame, but yeah, so here we have my ticket to the Jurassic World premiere. Um, okay, it's looking a bit bright in here, isn't it? Let's see if we can do something about the old uh, brightness. There we go, that's better. You can probably see a little bit better now. Um, yeah, so you've got this Jurassic World ticket which was in a frame at the Dolby Theatre in Los Angeles. Um, so that, that, I need to get a new frame for that because, you know, it's sort of like just in this in loose state. Actually, I'm going to pop that down there. And then here we have in this rough frame, <laughs> we've got my ticket to the Fallen Kingdom premiere, but this is, uh, so these two tickets, there's the front and the back. Um, they, those were the tickets to the premiere in Spain. That's why it's all in... Spanish, that was the Spanish premiere, uh, the first actually actual premiere of the film, which was funny because me and my wife, whose two tickets these are, we, we travelled all the way to Spain and uh, we didn't understand a word that was going on in the film. Um, <laughs> and then up here we've got the Fallen Kingdom premiere at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, and that's that ticket there, uh, which I have. I need to get better frames for those. Um, and here I have an email, the email from Colin that was sent to me and Tim, the first ever email Colin sent to us after the Maserani Global site uh, was about to launch. Like, I think this was the night before it launched, I think, the 14th of November. I think it was very close. 
But anyway, yeah, he sent us this lovely message, and you know, I thought it was worth framing. But I mean, this is old; you can tell the paper's all crinkly. But it's just something I put up as sort of a bit of motivation uh, for myself. Um, here we have the Jurassic Park free size comparison poster. This was on the wall, hung up. It's probably my favourite Jurassic poster. Um, you know, it's it's got hideous dinosaur renders on it, and it's not accurate or anything. But I just like the look of it, and I think it's a neat addition to the poster collection that you can get in Jurassic Park. Um, but obviously, with the spare room being uh, reorganised for a certain little one, um, this has now gone back into storage. But one day it will adorn a wall in the future. Uh, here we have Jurassic Park Operation Genesis for PlayStation Two. Um, love this game. I might actually live stream this again soon. You know, I say a lot of things about like <laughs> what videos are coming, but maybe I'll play this a little bit more. And you got the classic cheat sheet. This was from when I was a child. And it tells you all the cheats. <laughs> Kill all tourists. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, there you go. There you go, there's your cheats. And then you got the oh let's have, I haven't looked at this booklet in a while. Let's have a look at that. Oh, it's got the Hulk. The Hulk game being advertised. Oh, there you go. That game I do want to get and play PlayStation 2. But yeah, I remember opening this up and you got John Hammond looking really weird. And then you get, and I remember seeing this page and going, oh my god, this game's great. You got like John Hammond, Peter Ludlow, Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Henry Wu, Dr. Ellie Sattler, Ray Arnold, Robert Muldoon, and Jane Powers. Like, <laughs> who is this character? Probably. The most underappreciated character in the Jurassic Park, well, history, is Jane Powers. Why do I never hear people talk about Jane Powers anymore? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so... I don't know if this is expensive to pick up anymore, but yeah, this is the, uh, you know, the original PlayStation 2 when it was released. I think I got it pretty much close to the day of release, so there we go. Great game. And now... We go to, uh, we'll go here. So we've got a DVD of the Indominus Escape from Jurassic World. And uh, I got this so I could watch it with my nephew when he was little. Um, and it's funny because we did consultation on the scripts for the Lego series. Um, you know, they sent us the scripts so we could go over them and see. And they just wanted to enga like gauge our thoughts on them. And there was nothing wrong with him. We were just like, yeah, just have fun with it. Because <laughs> you're not meant to take these seriously. And I know there's a new one out now. I've seen it in the stores called The Secret of Isla Nublar or something. Um, I haven't picked that up. I haven't even seen it. I, you know, the Lego, the Lego shorts, they are goofy fun. They're just, you know, probably, you know, they're not for me. They're for little tiny little ones. Little tiny little ones. Um, here we have... Uh, but behind the scenes of the Lost World on VHS, which was unlabeled, so I put my own label on it. Um, and this was found in a charity shop for, I think it was 70p, I think. But um, yeah, so this is the, um, the behind the scenes on the Lost World laser disc. So this behind the scenes feature is this. And I don't know if it says how long it is. Does it say a run time? don't think so, no. Unless it says it on it. Let's see if I can get it out. Oh, I don't know if I actually can. No, it's blank. That's what I mean. It's like there's literally nothing. But it's really short, as you can see by the tape. It's like it's not very long. I'll pop that back in there. So, yeah. So, I don't even have a VHS player anymore. But um, maybe I need to pick one up so I can watch that. If I move the box. Oh, God. Now, you know what? I'm going to have to go from here. So here we have the uh, ground tracker vehicle from the Lost World from when I was a kid. And I believe the lights still work if there was batteries in them. Um, but you can see how old that is. It's all rusty and... Oh, God, it's just full of crap. <laughs> yeah, not good. But yeah, I believe the lights still work. Um, and yeah, that's just a, an awesome, awesome toy, which one day we'll get... Passed down to my nephew, I believe. Ugh. That's over there. Um, here we have... This is what's stopping that box coming out. Here we have two notebooks of mine, which um, I used during the marketing. This is the Jurassic World one. 
Um, these are notebooks that are just full of like stuff that we learned behind the scenes. I'm not going to go into it. Like <laughs> we got asked to design the Maserani global logo, so I was just doodling loads of different logo designs. See, so, like it's just old stuff, even like <laughs> like that. Uh, what was it McRani? Like. <laughs> But, like, just stupid, stupid ideas for designs. Um, just trying to see. But I think someone else outside of us got the, um, they won. But, yeah, so when, when I, I'm not going to go into this because there's, like, almost sensitive material in there. But that's that one for Jurassic World. And this one's for Fallen Kingdom. Um, you know, it has, like, oh, this one I can sort of show you. Um, this is like what we saw on our set visit because we weren't allowed to take pictures or anything. So like, you know, when we went to the set visit, this is like a page. When I got back to my um, hotel where I was staying during the visit, uh, I, with my memory, I just wrote down as much stuff as I could remember what we saw on that day. Um, yeah, and that was on the 3rd of March, 2017. So, and there's notes that we make like with... Uh, universal on um, things like when we have chats with them over um, the internet when we have conference calls and stuff like I'll have my notebook next to me to write stuff down so I've got those two and hopefully one day um, you know given all current events hopefully one day I'll have a third notebook to go along with this um, but work on that sort of put on hiatus at the moment um, now now I can get this out uh, so in this box, this is my little shoe box of <laughs> Kenner items. Uh, firstly, this is the Jurassic Park tour car um, that was from Universal Studios Japan, which I saw and uh, and I thought was quite neat. And it's actually an officially licensed product by Ford. So you would think it would be more accurate than it actually is. I think it's meant to be like a new Ford car. Um, let me see if I can get this out. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm just going to plonk it out. So yeah, you'd think this would be more accurate to the film, considering uh, Ford actually signed it off. And maybe it is, but it doesn't have the sunroof. Um, and I think there's some bars missing from the back. But um, yeah, it's a neat little uh, little toy. And, uh, and it was like one of the few things I actually picked up from Japan because I did, I did a video on um, hunting for Jurassic items in Japan. And so I was trying to pick up, within reason, I was picking up things that I saw and this was one of them. So uh, yeah, a little, it's called the Jurassic Park car. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, right, okay, so yeah, we have the Quetzalcoatlus here, as I mentioned before, with its floppy broken neck. Um, its head does not want to stay up, so <laughs> you have to hide it. This is one of my favourite toys as a kid because I'd never heard of this um, flying reptile until I saw the toy for this. Um, well, actually, I think I got it for Christmas. Um, but when I opened that Christmas present, I was like, what is this? I've never heard of this. And, uh, yeah, and it's a, oh, its feet are all, uh, its feet are all mangled. But, like, you could grab characters in its claws and... Uh, and flap its wings. I don't know if it's wings. Oh, they still do flap. Um, and you connect. Oh, I can't really do it with one hand, but you can. Let me see if I can. Yeah, so you can bend the wings in. And you clip it like that. Um, and then you would do the other one, like this. But I've broke. this has been broken, so that doesn't go in there. But the idea is you put it in like that. And then when you press the back button, the wings pop out like so. Like... And it's ready to fly. But I just, I don't know, I really like this. I love the colours. It reminds me of the Jeeps from Jurassic Park because it's got like grey and red. And I just thought that was a, a cool and, um, you know, unexpected addition to the toy line. Uh, here we've got the Triceratops, which is a classic toy from the 90, 90s. All rubber, aside from the head and its legs. Um, yeah, and you press a button on its side here that's inside and its head bucks up like so and I love the colors on this like it's a real like almost looks really natural um, and then you've got the dino damage there um, which is a classic tr tr like I don't know classic trait of the old figures so yeah triceratops which is in scale to the t-rexes oh god this is gonna be messy 
Um, and here we have the Junior T-Rex, or the uh, Juvenile T-Rex. Junior, I think it's called Junior actually, which was again one of my favourite toys as a kid. It's all rubbery, and I've uh, the the um, Dino Damage piece is missing. I might have to pick up like a spare one on, on online somewhere. But aside from some of the paint wear from me like holding it, like on the back of its head, you can see it's like paints coming off. This is still in good nick. Like I played with this one like a lot. It went through the mud. It got grubby. I lost that thing. I stuck blue tack and plasticine in there to try and make a replica one when I was younger. But um, but no, this T-Rex has seemed to have survived a long time. And uh, it's one of my favourite figures that I uh, owned from when I was a kid. And one of the things about this figure that, that I remember the most, when I opened the box for the first time when I got it, because I bought it from this place called Merry Hill in Birmingham, um, was the smell of the rubber. And... Uh, I don't know, it doesn't smell, obviously, <laughs> it obviously it doesn't smell like it did, but there's a particular smell that came with this thing when you opened it up, like this new rubber smell. It's, it was really strange and specific, but whenever I smell that smell on other things now, it just takes me instantly back to that time. Uh, oh god, where do I even begin here? Uh, we've got a little Brachiosaurus in a cage that came with Tim. Um, we've got Alan Grant. He's really ill looking. He's like, oh god. Ugh, where's my money? <laughs> uh, you got Ellie Sattler. Got El Floppo. He's still here, kicking around. El Robert Muldoon. El Floppy. Floppy himself. Um, got Tim Murphy here. And he was the one who came with this. Um, Got the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3, which is the only Jurassic Park 3 figure I own still, and I love this thing. I think this is really neat. Um, what have we got here? We've got Alan, uh, Ian Malcolm from the Glider set. Uh, Dieter Stark with his twisty body. Um, and I think that's it for humans, I think. Did I miss anyone? No, that, that is it. Um, and then we've got like weapons. We've got two. For some reason, I've got two Robert Muldoon um, grenade launchers or rocket launchers, or whatever these things are meant to be. Um, two of those. Uh, we've got a, ri a rifle here. This is not from Jurassic Park. This is from a different set or something. Um, but I, I mean the handle's broken, but they were they were from this different set, but they were the perfect size for these characters. So yeah, I know the handle's broken, but you could like have it like this. So I used to have them use those. There's another one here that reminds, it looks almost like Eddie Carr's Lindstra air rifle. Or, or, or sorry, the, uh, the the tranquilizer gun that Roland Tembo uses to bring down the bull T-Rex, which I, uh, I used all the time. And then I believe somewhere there should be a pistol. Uh, yeah, here you go. There's a pistol. So there you go. So if you wanted to have like... Uh, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, you get the idea. It, it does fit, but yeah, he's got like a pistol. Um, yeah, and then you got the Raptor here, which um, the bite mechanism doesn't really work on this one, but this is one of the first ever Jurassic Park toys I ever owned, so it's uh, stayed in my collection. And we got the first ever Dino Jurassic Park toy I ever owned, which is the Electronic Raptor with its completely scuffed eye. Um, yeah, almost on both sides. It's got like the end of its tail is missing. Um, and I don't think it works anymore at all. Uh, no, I should probably get those batteries out there. If they, well, I might have already done it, but I love this thing. This, this was like when I first saw this, I thought this was the coolest thing ever, and I still do. I really love the coloration of this Raptor, and it seems it seems bigger than the other ones. Um, so I always used to pretend this was the big one, or like the bigger Raptor. Um, and then speaking of Raptors, actually, we've got the Chaos Effect. Uh, Night Raptor is it called here? And I think their biting mechanism still works fine. And this this one doesn't look that old at all, even though it's probably 
from 1998 or whenever. Wait, does it have a date on it? Oh, wait, it does. 1997, there you go. Right there, it says that on there. But I absolutely love the coloration on this thing. It's been great inspiration for things like Dino Defenders that I'm working on. We have the Brachiosaurus, which um, I don't think has any batteries in it. It should it should make a noise, but I don't know. But you like move its leg and its tail moves. And it's got like this bendy neck that you can like bend and it kind of stays. I mean, it's really stiff and I don't want to break it, but... <laughs> um, yeah, it's Brachiosaurus, which I picked up a few years ago because it was on eBay and it was super cheap. So I thought, hey, look, one of the only one of the only few sauropod toys to ever exist. And I thought, well, you know what, I'll, I'll grab that because it's super cheap. And again, I can pass it on. Um, this was the Universal Studios Dinosaur one. I think they released these at the theme park. Um, and then obviously Mattel released their full-size Brachiosaurus and put this one to shame. Um... And then you've got the baby T-Rex here. Still going strong. You know, its leg, I'm going to say this, it went, you know, I'm, I'm missing the cast that goes on its leg. But to me, I can't unsee this, and I'm going to ruin it for everyone else. But with the hole there, the sort of bump on its knee, and you've got this round, big, like, thigh, whenever I do this with its leg, I always just see, like, this big-brained alien... It's like from the side, like a <laughs> like a profile profile view. It's like we have come to Earth to take over the planet and enslave the humans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what else have we got in here? We've got loads of like the babies. Like I said, we've got the, the Brachiosaurus baby there, but we've got like the baby Triceratops, uh, baby Pachycephalosaurus, which came with Ronan Tembo, of which I've lost. Um, we've got the Coelophysis here, a couple of Coelophysis, my old ones, which uh, get crap in these boxes. And it's got like a it's foot missing, and they just look, they definitely look like they were, well, they've seen better days. And I think these um, were some of the ones I played with the most, because I love the idea of these little things scampering about after the humans. Um, and then we've got a bit of capture gear here, which is actually for the Quetzalcoatlus, which uh, is going to go on its head, uh, like so, like that. And uh, I think that's, oh no wait, there's a, another thing from Japan in here, the blue. Um, the T-Rex one I owned that you can see in the video, I gave that away to another Jurassic fan. Um, to Arjan and his little boy. I gave it to, to him as a gift. Um, but yeah, this is blue, which is in here. And I think that's it. That's my little shoe box of the action figures that I have left. And then we go into the rest of the box. So, uh, okay, so we've got Jurassic Park, my original VHS, which is uh, one of the best things I ever own of the franchise. It's the, one of the things I have most sentimental value to. Um, but unfortunately I can't watch it. And even if I did have a VHS player, I don't know if I would watch it because it might get chewed up. Um, but I don't know. It's like why, But then I start to think, like, why am I holding on to it if I'm not going to do anything with it? Um, but I can't seem to let it go because it's, uh, it's you know, full of, full of memories. Uh, same with The Lost World here, which is my VHS The Lost World. And uh, it's been signed. There's a little signature, like a kind of blobby gold signature on the front of it by Harvey Jason who played Arjan uh, uh, Arjan <laughs> shout out to Arjan uh, RJ in the film um, yeah so he signed my lost copy of my uh, lost world uh, yeah which is uh, cool I really love it and there's one of the most, most nostalgic things for me from the entire franchise is the opening of this VHS with the bloody Mercedes Benz logo uh, adverts um when they start up i've talked about it in this video i did with clayton where we talked about nostalgia that whenever i see that advert which is on youtube it's um you know you just look up lost world vhs uh, opening or something on youtube you can find it. it's like this woman standing on the ledge of a building and it's got this music it's like doom, 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 uh yeah and it just makes me 
really nostalgic because I remember putting this in the VHS player the Christmas that I got it and uh, and yeah it was like I just remember that Christmas and everything it's just really nostalgic to me um, okay so here we've got Jurassic Park 3 the special edition box set which uh, you open up and it's got this really nice shiny look at the Raptor and you've got this film frame of the Spinosaurus versus T-Rex. I wonder if I can get that. It's got like a film cell in there. That looks kind of cool. Oh, we look straight through it. We went through the void. I'm trying to get it so we can... Yeah, that looks cool. But yeah, it shows you what the frame is at the top there. Um, and then it's the Certificate of Authenticity. Dress Pack 3, the special edition box set, signed by Kathleen Kennedy and Larry Franco. And uh, and then you get these sort of storyboard sort of cards. So it shows storyboard to final film. Which is pretty cool. And then in here you've got you've got this little thing you lift up and it's got the film, which is the standard DVD. That goes in there like that. And I saw this on eBay not too long ago, and I was like, that's really cool. That's really um, unique. And uh, and although Jurassic Park 3 is my least favorite Jurassic film, I still like the film. And I think this is probably the definitive box set to own for that movie, because it just captures everything about the, the time that this film was coming out. You know, you've got the shiny metallic uh, box and everything. So, you know, that's... Cool. I might actually put that on my DVD shelf. Um, and then here we've got all the books, all extra books. We've got the Jurassic Park 3 novelization, uh, which is interesting because it sheds light on aspects of the film that we don't know about, uh, that aren't said in the, uh, in the actual film. Like it says that the T-Rex is a fully grown T-Rex that is taken on the Spinosaurus. It's not a smaller version, which is what is toted on the uh, on the size chart, um, and also talks about how the pteranodons were not on InGen's list. The ones in the cage specifically, like they're not. Um, I don't know if I can get it up, but yeah, it talks about how the the pteranodons were not on InGen's list um, in that cage. And then you've got the novelization of the Lost World, which has seen better days. Um, which I haven't read in a while, so I can't really remember any neat facts about this one, but um, probably does the same sort of thing. Shed some light on the film. And then you've got the free Jurassic Park adventure books, which are really interesting. Uh, like before Jurassic World was a thing, this was the closest uh, you could ever get to what happens after Jurassic Park 3 in terms of canon. Obviously, um, they've been removed from canon uh, now, um, how, however, Jurassic Park Adventures Survivor is kind of, you can kind of argue the case because this is, these two are written in third person and, um, and this one's written in first person. This is all from Eric's perspective and it's all about his time on the island and it's meant to be like, dear reader, my name is Eric Kirby. It's meant to be like he wrote this book that you're reading. So any like things he gets wrong, it's kind of like you can kind of forgive it for that. And, uh, and this is really interesting because it gives a lot of context for what happens in Jurassic Park 3. And any fans of Jurassic Park 3, or even detractors of Jurassic Park 3, should probably read this. Because it's, it's designed for kids, but it does offer an interesting perspective into how Eric Kirby survived on the island. And not only that, um, I prefer Eric Kirby in this book than I do in the actual film. Because in this one, he's way more traumatised by his experience on the island than what he is in the film. In the film, he's too nonchalant, in my opinion. He doesn't really show any signs of struggle. Um, he's not... Um, like He doesn't seem phased by what he's doing, whereas in this, he's talking... It talks a lot about uh, how he's, like, you know, feeling one with the island and, like, it's making him feel weird and, like, how he's fighting for survival and that. So, yeah. Interesting books, and I highly, highly recommend picking those up. And then we've got... Another copy, another two copies of uh, Dress Park and the Lost World in paperback form. Um, yeah, so you know, you know what those are. Uh, here we've got some CDs. Uh, we've got the Lost World game soundtrack by Michael Giacchino, which is actually, you know, its own little album. Which I don't think many people know that they actually released the Lost World game soundtrack as. 
uh, as an, a separate album. And you've got Michael Giacchino there, who would obviously later go on to score Jurassic World and uh, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And there's a bit of behind the scenes stuff about him working on this from uh, January 1998. And then even this booklet opens up with uh, some of the artwork from the game, which is really cool to see. Um, and some other like images that I don't usually see, like concepts and stuff from the game, which uh, you don't really see people uh, sharing about. I mean, things like this we see all the time. Um, but images like this, of the raptors in the field, not so much. And whatever this picture is, the compies, maybe someone can shed some light on what that is. But yeah, I just think this is a really cool addition to anyone's collection, really. But it's also a really cool album as well to listen to. So yeah, and that's the separate album of that. There you got Jurassic Park soundtrack. Uh, you know, we, we all know what this is. <laughs> And the uh, same sort of deal, comes with a booklet. Well, I probably won't go through actually everything. <laughs> How long is this video? Maybe yeah, an hour long. Uh, Just Park free soundtrack. Special enhanced CD with uh, behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, there you go. Just Park free soundtrack. The Lost World soundtrack, which um, actually is a pop-up one. You open it up and it's like, got the disc there. And then you open it up, and it's like a, this pop-up standy thing. And you have to like unfold the T-Rex. It's like whoop whoop. It's like Transformers. <laughs> um, yeah, and you got the Raptors there. So yeah, that that's a really cool album. Well, or like neat design for the, uh, you know, the album. I don't know why they had to stick the. Uh, there, this is a sticker. They've stuck the, the the track titles on the back on a sticker, and I don't know why. Like, uh, did they get something wrong? And if I peel this off, it's there. <laughs> I'm not going to, but I've always wondered. And then you've got this uh, single, this dusty, dusty single, which is the theme from Jurassic Park, which is, uh, I think it only contains two tracks. This was the first thing on album I owned. It's got this poster which comes with it, which is really battered and ripped. I don't even really want to open it to have a look. Um, yeah, and that's the theme from Jurassic Park. And then here we have a couple of little bits. There's an old cassette, which I did as a kid. It says Jurassic Park, and I have no idea what this is, aside from it just says Jurassic Park on it. So maybe one day I'll get a tape player and find out what that is. Here we've got the first Michael Crichton book, the audio book, which is two cassettes. Um, I don't even know, how do you open this? Yeah, so it's the Jurassic Park on cassette, the audiobook. Uh, we've got my old Lost World wallet from when I was a kid, which I actually used not too long ago because <laughs> my uh, leather wallet uh, was broken, so I had to get a new one, and in the interim I used, actually used that. Um, and it's interesting because it brings up like the whole DX virus and stuff. Tag and release. But yeah, um, and then we've got this Jurassic Park bookmark with another film cell in it of Alan Grant. And uh, and what's funny about this is I don't think this is an official. Oh, it says certificate of authenticity, but then the logo is weird because the logo is like yellow font and the T Rex is the wrong way round. So I don't know what's going on there, but it's a cool little bookmark. It was a neat gift. And then in this packet. I'm not going to open this, but you've got like all the trading cards that I have, uh, a, an iron-on Jurassic Park patch, spare one, because the other one went on my Pterodome logo, and like a uh, an ID badge in there. And then down here we have the InGen list. So this is the physical list that I made for the Dinosaur Protection Group website, the viral marketing for Jurassic World. Fallen Kingdom, and this is the one I made and then scanned into the computer. So this one hasn't been edited via the computer, so you can just see all the loose coffee stains and that I was doing on it to give it a texture. So it doesn't look very impressive in real life, but um, this is all, uh, you know, laminated. And, uh, and what's interesting about this is this is the one 
before we edited, did proper editing. This is the one with the trude on at the back of it, which uh, some people um, wondered if why that was in there. And the reason we took that out is because in the booklet that came with Jurassic Park, the game, um, Dr. Sorkin talks about how she didn't put that she took all records of it out of the InGen library or something. Like she, re she removed it from their from their records. Now I'm not. That doesn't mean I'm saying Jurassic Park the game is 100% canon, but we didn't want to like totally out, you know, rule it out. So um, you know, it, it was just meant to be like if you want it to be canon, it works. We haven't written anything that actually takes it out of canon. But if you don't want it to be part of canon, then you know. It, it still it, it works either way if you really want it to. Um, here are a load. Oh my word! Look at this. This, this. this is all. This was the proposed timeline, March to April, for Jurassic World Two. So this was. Oh yeah, I had this put up on the wall next to my office in my in our old house. Um, <laughs> down with this kind of thing. Raw. No more Maserani. Um, so this was what I had up on the wall that had like the timeline. Uh, I think it has dates, yeah, like June, July, September, phase one website complete. So it's like, this was like up on the wall to know like what we were gonna be doing and obviously things changed. So that's all like just rough bits of paper to do with that, I guess. And here we have the T-Rex uh, model box. Oh my God, this is heavy. You know what? I'm gonna have to get this out. Carefully. Ugh. Now the T-Rex model, I think I made a video on this. That is actually over here, up on the uh, up on the side there. I haven't painted it yet. Oh, and you can also see I've got the Herrerasaurus. I'll go over there and film those in a minute. But yeah, these, this is the, the box for that. And I use this to store all the comic books. So you've got Raptor, part one of two um, and part two of two. And then you've got a section of the original Jurassic Park uh, movie into comic adaption here, which is really old. It's like this paper, it's like kind of proper brown and cracked. And cracked. And you've got this old birthday cards and a, and a popcorn box and uh, pictures from Universal Studios of us going on the ride and a newspaper that has me on the front cover. <laughs> Uh, from when I did my work on Maserani Global um, and the old annuals. I'm not going to go through all of this. It's ridiculous. And then Bam Sam lovingly sent me loads of Jurassic Park comics uh, when we went to go see Fallen Kingdom. He gave me all these. So I've got like loads of Jurassic Park comic books that are like uh, originals from back in the day. Um, and then you've got my Lost World souvenir annual. Let me get these comic books out of here. So yeah, so like you've got like Raptor. That's that same one I've got a minute ago, but this is like the original one that came out. So yeah, it's just like around when when did this come out? Uh, don't, don't think I don't think it says. Um, let me just see. No, I don't think it says a date on it at all. But anyway, yeah. So you get you get the point. There's these old Jurassic Park comics that are like from the time. Yeah, and then you've got the Lost World Souvenir Magazine, which is one of my most nostalgic items. And you've got the making of Jurassic Park, the making of the Lost World, uh, the Jurassic Park movie uh, adapted into the comic book, The Full Thing, uh, which is nice to see. Uh, you've got like, like an Argos. Uh, Okay, like, oh yeah, I got this when I was buying stuff for my nephew. Um, and then you've got the instructions, instructions for the model kit, which is right there. And that is all, oh my word, let me try and get these back in. All what is inside, you know what, I'm going to do this later. That is all what's inside this box that I have left of my collection. And now we're just gonna pop over to see a couple more things. So as I said, over here, I've got the Lost World Bull T-Rex statue, which I built, but it's not finished because I've got to like get some stuff to close these gaps and I wanna paint it. Um, 
His mouth is like got all white in it from the super glue, because <laughs> its tongue was really difficult to get in. So I ended up super gluing it in there. This is a cool um, like statue of the bull T Rex, and I want to make it look like a bronze statue eventually. Um, over here we've got the Hararosaurus figure, Hararosaurus, uh, which I use uh, to aid me in drawing Dino Defenders for the Mega Raptor because they've got a very similar head shape. So I use this to get the right angles and stuff to make it look as good as possible so I have that next to me. Over here you got this Jurassic Park mug which I use for holding my paintbrushes. And then over here we have the Blu-rays. We've got the original trilogy on Blu-ray, we've got the Jurassic Park 3D Blu-ray, um, and we've got Jurassic Park 3, the Japanese uh, version of the, of the DVD which is pretty neat and it comes with the size comparison poster as well. And then we've got Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on Blu-ray, which are in these tins, which look really cool next to one another. Um, and what's interesting about these is you open them up and behind, you've got a cinema ticket in here. Um, you open it up and it's got like in the background, Owen, uh, you know, calming the raptors down or holding them back from attacking the, um, park worker and then in Fallen Kingdom if you open it up that's really hard to do with one hand uh, open it up and then behind the discs I don't know if I can get this out you've got Owen standing well doing the sort of similar thing with blue here so it's like these DVD or these blu-rays have the similar sort of design to them and then on the back of the Fallen Kingdom one it has the logo here so we're Fallen Kingdom, it says the park is gone. And then on the back of the Jurassic World one, it didn't say anything, it just had some scratch marks, but I actually stuck these stickers on that show the raptors being released. And it's a really nice picture because you can see all their coloration. The raptors being released and Claire looking at as the door opens to the T-Rex paddock. And to me, they're the two most pinnacle moments in the film um, in terms of awesomeness and coolness. But they go nice and neat on the shelf next to... Uh, the Jurassic Park trilogy and it's actually quite nice to see uh, the logos all next to each other because they, they sort of fits they sort of fit in that similar style they've got you know you've got the red logo here and then you've got the blue logo and then the cracked rock logo and it's just I just love this design of you know the logo all next to each other and there you go that was all what was in my Jurassic Park box and that is what I've got left so Yes, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe if you want to, and um, yeah, look forward to more Jurassic videos on the way because I'm going to be making some more. I'm going to be keeping up with it, actually. Uh, some interesting videos are on the way, I promise. But yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, have a good day, guys, and stay safe out there.